pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Dankert, would you do the roll call, please? Mayor Steam. Present. Councilmember at Large Austin. Present. Councilmember Fisher. Present. Baskin. Present. Kelly. Present. Waller. Present. King. Present. Pashusta. Present. We have a quorum, Your Honor. Item number one is a motion for adoption of the agenda. We need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? All Aye. Do we need to do the oaths? Do we need to do oaths? Just for two individuals, sir. <coughs> oh. For city attorney and city administrator? Bingo. Exactly. Okay. We got to. Okay. Go ahead, Tom. That's yours. I'll do Craig Byram first. Craig, if you'd stand, raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, Craig Byram. I, Craig Byram. Having been appointed to the office of city attorney. Having been appointed to the office of city attorney. Of said city of Austin. Of said city of Austin. Do swear that I'll support the Constitution. Do swear that I will support the Constitution. Of the United States and state of Minnesota. Of the United States and the state of Minnesota. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. Congratulations, sir. Can I get your autograph right there? Is there any answer there? I guess, sir. No. Craig, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Craig Clark. I, Craig Clark. Having been appointed to the office of city administrator. Having been appointed to the office of city administrator. Of said city of Austin. Of said city of Austin. Do so swear that I'll support the Constitution. Do swear that I'll support the Constitution. Of the United States and the state of Minnesota. Of the United States and the state of Minnesota. And I'll faithfully discharge the duties of my office. And I'll faithfully discharge the duties of my office. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. Congratulations, sir. Mm -hmm. If I could have your autograph right there. Is that it? That is it. We shall move on then. Number two is a motion approving the minutes from January 7, 2019. Need a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Under three, under recogni uh, recognitions and award, we have a Mr. David, well, we just swore Craig in as our city attorney. Craig, it's the first year we've sworn you in, I'm sure. Mr. Overston has been our attorney since, uh, let's see, 1997? That's correct, Your Honor. And you have been seated here since then, right? And before that, I know it was your dad, right? That's right. How long was your dad attorney? 34 years. Somebody told me this is the end of a, an era, but it's like I said, it's the end of a dynasty. We've had, uh, <laughs> we've been dealing with you guys. I mean, I, <laughs> okay, people don't understand. I was in the union and I dealt with Craig's dad. I mean, not Craig's dad, but uh, David's dad and David. So I absolutely enjoy him, but I've been dealing with you for a long time. <laughs> That's the point I was trying to make. Anyway, um, we have a resolution. Resolution. Oh, let me read the resolution. It's um, honoring David V. Holverstein for exemplary service in the, pos in the position of city attorney. Whereas the mayor and city council wish to express their appreciation and recognition of David V. Holverstein for his exemplary services in the position of city attorney. And whereas his appointment to the position <coughs> began February 1st, 1997, and he serves served city councils for 22 consecutive years, and whereas his service to the city of Austin and its citizens has at all times been of the highest ethical and professional standards, and whereas his excellent counsel and guidance on matters placed before him has been of paramount benefit to the elected and appointed officials and the citizen of Austin, citizens of Austin, and whereas <coughs> David V. Holverstein will retire from the position of city attorney of Austin, Minnesota, effective January 31st 2019 now therefore be it resolved that the mayor and city council of the city of Austin Minnesota do hereby honor and extend on behalf of the preceding elected officials and the citizens of Austin their sincere thanks and appreciation for 22 years of exemplary service in the position of city attorney from February 1st 1997 to January 31st 2019 uh, we haven't passed it yet, but we're going to be passing it, I'm sure. And uh, David, thank you. I mean, I, David's always been there. I, when I needed to call him, 
David's on the phone in five minutes and I can get his opinion and about five more usually. Sometimes he has to look it up. But it really is a passing of an era and you will be sorely missed, as is your dad, to be honest with you. So with that, um, we need a resolution. So move the resolution. Is there a second? Second. second. Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. Pashusta. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. David, would you like to say anything? Well, I'd certainly like to thank the mayor and the council for those, uh, uh, that nice resolution and comments. I want to express my thanks uh, for all of the staff that I've worked with over the years. They not only were my colleagues, but a lot, uh, most of them became, uh, I would consider to be good friends. And I'm gonna miss them dearly. Also, I have to say I served under uh, several uh, city administrators, starting with uh, Daryl Stacy, uh, Pat McGarvey, Jim Herm, and Mr. Clark. Mm. And uh, I've enjoyed with, working with them all, and each had a different personality and a different point of view, and it was interesting and stimulating to work uh, for those, those folks. Also, I'd like to thank uh, this council and previous councils. Uh, it was a privilege to work with the council members and with a few minor exceptions. We got <laughs> along just great, and we've had some wonderful, wonderful people, intelligent, smart, and dedicated and loyal to the citizens of this city. And I, I am proud to have been able to work with them and serve them as well. So thank you so much. It was a privilege, and I'm going to miss it, I'll tell you that. Thank you. You'll be missed. You'll be missed, David. I'm sure Craig will do a great job, but even if he does as good a job as you, you'll still be missed. We, we work with you, you become part of the family. We, you know. So anyway, we shall move on. If I can find my agenda, here it is. Consent agenda. Um, number four, we need a motion for the consent agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, under number five, under petitions and re requests, approving street assessment rates for 2019. Mr. Lang. As we discussed at the work session, uh, the city of Austin has set assessment rates for our street reconstruction program. And looking back at previous years and evaluating how the program uh, worked for us in 2018, we assessed approximately 32% of the construction cost to adjacent property owners in 2018. And the remainder of the cost was picked up through our, our tax levy, um, for uh, that street reconstruction. Our, our goal is typically 40% uh, that, that we try to assess. And in reviewing different numbers, uh, we have come up with a recommendation of approximately a 3% increase to our assessment rates. That will not get us to 40% for 2019, but we feel that that is the proper number based on um, construction cost increases and other things in the industry. So uh, we, in your uh, resolution, there are set assessment rates for sidewalk, curb and gutter, urban reconstruction, rural reconstruction, and mill and overlay. We have different rates for residential construction versus a commercial construction. And we also have a policy that we utilize to make sure that we are um, having a consistent program throughout the city, whether we are working in the northeast, southeast, Southwest or Northwest, we apply the same program to everyone in those areas. Uh, so we feel that it's a very equitable system based on our policy and those set assessment rates. So that way it does not matter if you live on a concrete street or an asphalt street, if you live on a heavily traveled roadway or a narrow roadway, everyone is treated equally and, and assess those same uh, street reconstruction costs. So with that, uh, I would recommend approving those assessment rates for 2019. Council, any questions or comments? If not, we need a resolution for number five. So move the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Dankert. Council Member Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. 
Poshusta. Aye. Councilmember at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7-0, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Number six is a resolution approving an agreement with WHKS for the refurbishment of the Oak Park Mall Pond. Stephen. A couple of years ago, as this, as the Oak Park Mall revitalization project was uh, developed, we identified a need for um, refurbishment of the existing pond that is located there behind Shopco. It's a stormwater pond used to capture stormwater and then treat that water before it is uh, discharged into um, the watershed. And we set aside $100,000 for this project and we have received a proposal from WHKS to evaluate <coughs> the condition of the existing pond and make determinations of what would be necessary to bring the pond up to current standards. Uh, the pond was originally constructed in the 80s, so we want to bring it up to current standards by removing uh, the vegetation that is around the pond and, and also evaluating it to make sure that it, it's still functioning for all the treatment processes and different things that we want that pond to do. So we have a proposal from WHKS in the amount of $9,800 to analyze these things and come up with a design for the new pond. And we'd recommend awarding this project to WHKS with the funds coming out of our $100,000 budget that we have for this project. I have a question. Do these ponds have a life cycle? I yeah. mean, do they wear out? Is that part of... They, they'll fill up with sediment over time and they won't function properly. So they may need to be cleaned out, um, maintenance to trees. We do that on trees. a regular basis, I assume. Yeah, a lot of our ponds are fairly new. This is actually one of the older ponds that we have in town. Okay. So it's one of them why, the reason why this is one of the first ones that we'll be addressing. Okay, all right, thank you. Any other, council, any other questions or comments? If not, we need a resolution for number six. So move the resolution. Is there a second? second. Mr. Dankert. Council Member Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. Oshusta. Aye. Councilmember Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Okay, number seven is a motion appointing the following <coughs> council members to the Housing and Redevelopment Board. I, I know we're going to do that tonight, most of the appointments, but we had to have this one done before the meeting. I got on the phone with people <laughs> and we worked this out. Anybody have any questions on it? <coughs> if not, we need a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number eight is a motion approving Dave McKeegan as a police chief, effective February 21st, 2019. Uh, we can put this one back, can't we, Tom? We don't need to handle that, do we? <laughs> David, <laughs> we've gone through the testing process. Brian is, Brian, how many years have you been here? 35. And when, did, when were you promoted to detective? March of 1990. 90? 90. Okay. So we worked together for 16 years, me and Brian. But Brian is going to be leaving, and we went through the testing process. We had three excellent candidates, and uh, I, after talking to the Civil Service Commission and them, I'm sure any three of them would have been a great chief. Dave has kind of stood out a little bit from that group because he's just, Dave is going to be a good chief. He's going to, he's going to follow in some pretty big <coughs> footsteps, but I think he's up to it. So, any, I mean, would anybody like to, Brian, you want to say anything? No, I uh, agree with you, Mayor, that uh, police civil service went through the process. Uh, Captain McKeegan uh, came out uh, on top, and uh, that is your recommendation to the council, and I also approve of that recommendation. And I, t I, t I interviewed the candidate. I talked to him afterwards, and, and, and I tell you, I couldn't be more impressed. I, I am absolutely convinced that our police department is in really good hands for as long as I'll be here. So I feel really good about that, and everybody should. David, would you like to say something? Uh, I just want to say what an honor and privilege has been to work for Chief Creed the last eight years, uh, the five that we spent as a detective. Really is something as excited as I am about the, the next opportunity for me. I will miss the partnership that the, the chief and I have had uh, the past eight years. Uh, the other thing that uh, excites me about the city of Austin is uh, I've always felt it's been a blessing to have been hired here, uh, spent my career here. This is a great place to be collaborative with other people in other. Um, elements, other, other jobs, other businesses. It's a great place, again, to come together with people and build towards something. And really, in the 21 years I've been here, I've, I've seen so many positive things happen in Austin that have been exciting to be a part of, and it'll be exciting to lead the police department uh, into the future. 
and I think I worked with you for like nine years, and I think everybody knew that we had something special in David, and you know, it was just a matter of time that you don't know where he's going to go or what, but you know, David was was going to do well, and he's only he's still going to he's only halfway there, but uh, I really think this is a good choice. Just like when we picked Brian, I feel really good that. Uh, we're going to be in really good hands for a council. Anybody want to make any comments before we uh, approve this motion? I would only echo coming as a new council member, having been in the community, I would echo that Captain McKeegan does an outstanding job of collaborating with people across the community, always very approachable, always willing to go the extra mile to engage, especially with our more diverse communities. Um, it has always been about what is in the best interest of the community, and I think will be a tremendous asset. So we look forward to serving with you. Yep, and he's, he's been volunteering and going to stuff for years now, which, you know, I wouldn't say it's unusual, but it's a little unusual to have somebody involved as much as he was. So we're going to be fine. Anybody else? I'm still on the fence, Mayor. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> You're still what? I'm still on the fence a little bit. I'm not quite sure that McKeekin's our guy, but <laughs> totally kidding. I uh, work with Dave in my day job and couldn't uh, imagine searching the world <laughs> high and dry, and you wouldn't find a better person to be the, the next chief of police in Austin, Minnesota, than Dave McKeekin. So I'm really town. proud of him, and I'm uh, really uh, proud of Brian for the career he brought himself here in Austin, and he has been also a great guy to work with. So. Couldn't be happier with that torch passing from Chief Krieger to Chief McKeegan. And Tom, when is the swearing in going to be? 20th, 20th at 9 30. So he'll actually, we're doing this tonight, but he's actually going to be sworn in on the 20th. So you, know, you want pictures and stuff, that would probably be the time to do it. Although, Brian, you won't be here for that, will you? I will try to make it. Oh, you'll be in town. Okay. All right. So, with that, unless anybody else has anything, well, we need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, nine is a resolution approving a revised city attorney contract. If you're here for Dave, we're not going to be offended if you leave. <laughs> 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 it gets a lot more livelier after this, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So where are we, number nine? Uh, Craig. Yes. Uh, with the retirement of David Hoverston, we need to update, update the city attorney contract. Uh, this agreement transitioned to Craig Byron being the city attorney with Beckman, Hovey, and Helly serving as assistants with an overall base salary of 105164 health care for Byron, Hovey, and Helly according to the terms of the city health care. Additional services are covered in the contract at a rate of 125 an hour. Uh, there is a modification uh, from the previous agreement in item 4 and C and D which includes or reasonably uh, threatened. Uh, to accommodate instances where they spend a lot of time on <clears throat> matters before they turn into actual litigation. Um, council action is requested to approve the resolution as presented. Council, any comments? If not, we need a resolution for number nine. So move the resolution. Is second? Second. Okay. Mr. Danker. Councilmember Fisher. Aye. Aye. Hilly. Abstain. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. Oshusta. Aye. Councilman at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0 with one abstaining, Your Honor. Okay, we have 10 is KSMQ proposed project information. Eric Olson, KSMQ. I'll start, I'll start with the mayor. Start with um, mayor members, it's a pleasure uh, to have him worked with KSMQ to bring forward this $5.7 million proposed project, which is a partnership with state bond proceeds, Hormel Foundation. KSMQ in the city of Austin. Tonight there are three resolutions. Uh, the first resolution caps the fiscal participation of the city at $475,000 for the property and acquisition of, and site prep, <clears throat> and also approving a land acquisition with First Hartman Security and Casualty Insurance Company for $285,000, and as well as limiting uh, and outlining the city's role with administering the project and being in compliance with the state bond sale uh, requirements. Eric Olson, as you mentioned, Mayor, is here this evening. He's president and CEO with KSMQ and is here to give a presentation and outline the proposal. Yeah, come on up here, Rick. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, tell us who you are, make sure. Eric Olson, uh, president and CEO of KSMQ Public Television. It was uh, funny that uh, Bonnie, who's just stepped away, Bonnie Reitz was here because uh, 
three years ago when our board of directors started talking about we need more exposure, we need more visibility, I wasn't here that long. I've only been here uh, now going on eight years, but I knew Bonnie and she was my first point of contact when I asked, is this something that downtown would like? I mean, I, tell me about the community. What do you think? And she was really a big help. She was very supportive uh, early on. So uh, it was great to see her here tonight. Thank you all for inviting me. Uh, this is our third visit actually before the city council during uh, this near three year process. We've explained the value of KSMQ Public Television, a nonprofit, non commercial television station. And during our previous meetings, there's an overview of that, those past discussions in your packet. Uh, so I'm not going to go over those items. This is more of a business update. Uh, as you know, the discussion of a relocation of our facilities began in 2016 when the KSMQ Board of Directors held a visioning, visioning session. I'd like to, at this time, recognize our KSMQ Board members. Several are here in support tonight. If you want to just stand quickly. Miguel Garate from Riverland. Ted Hinchcliffe from the Hormel, found, from the Hormel Institute. Dr. Fred Bogot is our board chair, retired from Mayo Clinic. Laura Beasley, uh, Riverland Community College, runs the nursing program. Pat Schwab, uh, Vice President of Hormel Foods, our board. So thank you all very much for coming. Some of my staff's here too tonight <laughs> on their own. So stand up and say, hey, hey, there's our gang. Yeah, Dan. Stand up, Jeff, come on. Yeah, Matt Bloom. Who else is back there? Mike Bedner, Paul Fisher, Chief Engineer, Greg Soderberg underwriting and Kevin Hansen, one of our great crack producers that's about half our staff. So thanks for coming, gang. Um, it's good to have some support. Uh, after that visiting session that we had in 2016, we held public sessions throughout our 22 county viewing area, including in Austin, and <coughs> received funding from several agencies along the way. Great support. Uh, we aren't ones to ask for a lot of support uh, uh, for a project like this. We've never done this, so it was very heartening to get that uh, support. And here we are tonight. So we ask for yours in securing property in downtown Austin for construction of our permanent broadcast facility for KSMQ Public Television, something we have never had since we signed on the air here in 1972. I just want to quickly uh, run through some of the top line we do have three new council members so they and i met with two of them it. okay and we chatted okay. with rebecca and i believe they all spoke with staff to get up okay. to speed but you know, but thank you but you may um, they may, i mean if you do want to explain something that's fine that, if you think we already know oh, that could relevant. go on a while let me <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <All right. laughs> i've got a video to no know. no we'll do the short <laughs> okay. program i'm sorry i shouldn't have said that um, Let me put it this way, if new council members or anybody else has a question, ask them. But yeah, just yell, time. yell, yeah, go for it. Council member Pashista too. Um, the preferred property that we are talking about has been listed for sale for several years, big sign out front. We're pleased to be able to hopefully add new construction, a $5 million building to the downtown landscape. The site meets our needs from an engineering and an operational uh, standpoint. Go to this thing here now. Go there. Hey. Um, here are the numbers uh, as we know them today. This is an estimate from the beginning was 5.7 million for a new uh, facility. This is a public-private partnership between KSMQ Public Television, the Hormel Foundation, State of Minnesota, and the City of Austin. Uh, the first major action was in October of 17 the Hormel Foundation approved a 2.3 million dollar grant and they asked to make sure that we had partners on this project uh, in November of 2017 the City Council approved our fiscal agent to be serve as our fiscal agent quickly uh, state bonding funds can't be given to a nonprofit directly they have to flow through a governmental agency uh, and frequently in the other projects like these throughout the state for public television, they've gone through the city. Uh, and then last May, the state of Minnesota during its bonding process approved a $2.5 million appropriation for our project. Uh, we are here tonight because the city of Austin hopefully uh, will consider uh, the land purchase to donate 
on behalf of KSMQ at the meeting tonight. Uh, later this summer, probably in May, we're not sure right now, I'm meeting with consultants, we will begin our own capital campaign. Uh, and that's very important because our original request to the state was somewhat higher in negotiations. Uh, we agreed on a smaller amount, and so any extra dollars for the equipment part of this project will come from the cap from this uh, capital campaign fund, which we will begin, uh, like I said, hopefully in May. Tentative groundbreaking in June of this year, ribbon cutting, fourth quarter of 2020. Questions? And there's the property, as we've been talking about. This fulfills two key measures of the strategic plan of KSMQ, exposure, and access. If you know right now we're in the back of the West Building at Riverlands Community College and for a lot of reasons we were fine there for many years. Uh, we were fully funded by the federal government. That is changing over time. We need to uh, review our business model and become uh, more involved in the underwriting and the sales and generating revenue on our own. And that's a long-term prospect also for survival of this entity. There's no guarantee that television stations just get to keep their licenses. We have to be successful and grow. And we really think that being downtown will, will help us. We're very confident about that uh, because of more visibility, more efficient programming. We're building a building for television, which we don't have presently at the least space we have at Riverland Community College. Oops went too far. That was a, a Google map of the see, backspace. Thank you. So the red dot in the middle is the property we're speaking of. Domino's next door, backwards. Uh, Home Federal down the block. Uh, and I kind of call this, if our project were to be approved, I really think we could become kind of a gateway to downtown, a new uh, venue for outdoor entertainment perhaps. Uh, I want our station to be able to be a storytelling hub that's not just a TV station. Based on where we're going in the future as far as television, we're always going to want to share stories with each other, I think, and brought, capture them, store them for history, and broadcast them. So. We want a building that will go with the flow of, of media changes as we move on. Or something like, you know, 4th Fourth, Fourth of July, Freedom Fest. There are lots of things happening downtown. Maybe we can build our building so that we can have an outdoor music event there for the public and uh, also record it as a concert. That's that's uh, there aren't my architects aren't here tonight, so I can say all this stuff's going to happen. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty good, but uh, they know about that. I want it to be multi-purpose. Uh, when this is neat, that when word got out that our board and that we were looking at a new uh, fund and a new facility, one of our volunteers and our members, Ruth, called and she said, "I want to be the first donor for the new building project." And she came over to the station with a check, and it was just, it, I was tickled to no end. Uh, so thanks, Ruth. That's our overall viewing area. If everybody in that circle and out from our transmitter had our TV on, uh, PBS and the federal government says it would be about 700,000 people. Our signal goes beyond that circle, which is our guaranteed broadcast area. There's a little hash mark right in the middle, if you can see that, to the right of Austin. Grand Meadow, that's where our transmitter, uh, that's where our transmitters are located. So we broadcast from there all the way out into Iowa, northeastern uh, Iowa, and north of Rochester. Mentioned this, our key supporters, uh, board of directors, our regional advisory commission, we have about 2,000 KSMQ members, and they stated in, in uh, uh, forms we asked them, surveys, that they supported this move and remaining in Austin because uh, we could be in any city in our viewing area. Um, the Minnesota Legislature, Representative Poppy and Senator Sparks 
were very supportive and helpful and really worked hard the last session. Uh, and Senator Senjum in Rochester, who actually wrote the Senate version of the bill supporting KSMQ. Uh, there are six public television stations in Minnesota, independent ones. Together we formed the Minnesota Public Television Association, and as a group they have voted and support our project. Obviously the Hormel Foundation with a very generous grant, and PBS, uh, the ombudsman from PBS approved uh, our request. Uh, this year, uh, we have many local partnerships for programming. We're going to show a movie at the Paramount Theater uh, this weekend, the Mayo Clinic uh, film. Uh, but our two long-term ones this year that are new is we've just partnered with Mayo Clinic Health System Austin Albert Lee for a weekly live call-in show. And we just finished season one. It's called KSMQ Health Connections. And this weekend, we're doing a live broadcast from Nolton Auditorium of the Luther College Nordic Choir. It's been many decades since they've been here, and a retired uh, choir director from Austin High, Brian Johnson, is going to be my co-host, and we're going to talk and listen to some great music and broadcast it live to our region. The majority of our members are on fixed incomes. They don't buy cable TV. They don't have dish. Uh, we're their source for television over the year, and so they, they like a variety of programs, public affairs and entertainment. Uh, that's our business right there, KSMQ Public Service Media, Inc. We broadcast four television channels. Our primary channel, KSMQ TV, Megahertz, which is kind of a uh, European, they show European serial dramas, and there's also some European news in there. The Create Channel, which is a how-to programs, all sewing with Nancy and the like. And then our channel number four, 15.4, the Minnesota channel is an awesome, unique product in the country. It's a cooperation of all five of our stations broadcasting all Minnesota content all over the state. So when we do a documentary or we do a show, we send it to the Minnesota channel and it will air for uh, like our most recent off 90 season is running for three years. So, uh, uh, you know, when the folks at TenderMaid, uh, I went in there for a shake and, and uh, she told me, hey, somebody was down from the Twin Cities because they saw the show and we did a feature on them and uh, uh, Sarah uh, White and uh, she said they came down from the cities. So that's directly in relation to the Minnesota channel because it was outside even of our broadcast area. Somebody saw it, made the road trip uh, to come downtown. So that was pretty cool. Uh, we have a media fund and endowment fund set up uh, with the Austin Area Foundation. We have an investment portfolio to help supplement our operations, and we lease space on our tower to other broadcasters. A few. Uh, that's I spoke that about the uh, those are where the other uh, public television stations are located. Pioneer Public Television, you see that one to the northwest of us, out by the border. That's Granite Falls, Minnesota. They just built and opened a brand new facility this past year. And in fact, we've selected the same architect firm, MSR, out of the cities um, to work on our project should we be fortunate to get approval tonight. Uh, prior to that, Lakeland Public Television in Bemidji, which is way up on top there, they just uh, four years ago moved into a brand new facility that also took advantage of state bonding dollars. Prairie Public is in Moorhead and Fargo. WDSC is Duluth, and of, and of course Twin Cities Public Television in St. Paul. Uh, we have some support downtown, and we do business. You know, the impression that we're just we're a nonprofit and we don't do business, generate business is I, I don't think it's accurate. And I just wanted to bring a supporter up to say a few words about KSMQ, Mr. Tom Clapper from Home Federal. If that's all right. Thank you. I had to write my notes down tonight because I have a head cold and can't concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been uh, uh, partners with KSM, business partners with KSMQ for 14 years. And over those 14 years, we've seen a lot of growth and um, um, investment into the business uh, over, the, over those 14 years. For instance, uh, a few years ago, they went HD digital. So that's an example of what they've invested into their business. So as all of you know that uh, KSMQ is a hidden treasure in Austin. 
Um, they provide wholesome educational and quality programming. Um, currently, as uh, Eric mentioned, they're, they've been behind Riverland College for many years, but through the years have outgrown that facility. So we definitely are in support of them moving into the location next to the bank. Um, I think it would be a, a, a great upgrade to, to the neighborhood. Um, and I think Austin should be proud of showcasing KSMQ. And by moving them and bringing them downtown, that would allow Austin to showcase what we have, have there in, the, in, that, uh, in KS, KSMQ. I think it would uh, show potential businesses and new residents and visitors to Austin what we have. So uh, again, thank you for uh, your consideration um, uh, to carry on the growth and investment KSMQ is making in Austin. Thank you, Tom. Uh, closing uh, quickly, we really believe uh, that KSMQ Public Television will help bring excitement downtown and deliver more non-commercial information to Austin residents and the region through an efficient facility that's built for television. Uh, we have packing crates outside with our sets in them now. We have to take them apart, put them back in the crates, Every new show takes about two days set up, very inefficient, and with new media, new wiring, uh, we think with the smaller footprint, actually, we're looking at 12,000 square feet for, instead of 15, uh, we can do more for the local region. And the downtown location, the state funding will really <coughs> help us survive, I believe, I'm confident, uh, long-term survival as a community resource, because it's a benefit to the host community. We do more stories in Austin because we're here. And that, those stories go out, as I mentioned with the one little uh, 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 idea with uh, Tendermaid that she told me. That's just one. We do Off 90, we do Farm Connections. Dan Hoffman's here, host of Farm Connections. Uh, we do lots of things in Mower County so the region gets to see how great we do, the things we do. Um, so I think we'll, we'll be able to do much better service for decades uh, and serving our 22 county uh, viewing area with our new home in Austin. I'd ask for your support. Any questions? Thank you very much, Mayor and Council. Your capital program was $3 million? Beg pardon? Your capital yes. Was $3 million, so you're going to raise yes. $3 million. Correct. Okay. That's, to me, that's one of the keys. I mean, in the Council traditionally, if somebody is going to, you know, when people come and ask for money, it's one thing, but when they're willing to invest themselves, plus the foundation and, uh, and uh, gr you know, grant dollars from the state, it's kind of a no-brainer, and I don't think you're going to have an issue here, but Council, do you have any questions? Your Honor. Um, I guess, first of all, I, I'd like to say I'm a little disappointed that we're acting on this matter in January instead of November or December. Uh, when it was originally brought to council in November and your first vote was taken, a four to three vote in favor of it, uh, I, I'm disappointed that that council at that time did not get to finish out the project mm -hmm. and that this wasn't brought back to a work session considering we have three new council members on board uh, that are being confronted with this at a, at a meeting. 11th hour. Yes. Uh, also, I guess I'm not against this project. I'll come out and say that at first. I just don't feel that this is a good investment of City of Austin funds at this time. Uh, when we're looking at dedicating 45% of our current uh, building fund for this project, uh, when there are other projects uh, that could come up that would need that money possibly in the near future. Um, I just feel that reading the bond bill and in listening to Mr. Olson's presentation, I guess I just feel that if the money isn't there between, because uh, the grant money is to acquire land for and to pre-design, design, construct, furnish, and equip a regional public television station in the city of Austin. Nowhere in the bonding does it say that they need support of the city of Austin to have this project go forward. And I guess since they didn't get the, all the money they wanted from the state, then maybe they need to look at scaling back the project to fit the budget. Um, I just, at a time when we need to increase our tax base 
to buy property and take it off the tax rolls to me just does not make sense and to commit almost a half a million dollars to this project just does not make sense for me as a citizen of the city of Austin. And we haven't seen any agreement as far as how this facility is going to be maintained, uh, whether KSMQ is going to provide funding for maintenance and upkeep of this building going forward for the next 25 to 35 years, or whether that's going to be on the city of Austin, since we will be the owner of this building. Um, I guess I have a concern there. Um, previous council members that had intimate knowledge of the situation uh, questioned the ability of KSMQ to do that going forward. Um, and I guess I would like to see something in writing that ensures me that us owning this building, that it is going to be maintained and taken care of for the next 25 to 35 years. Because if something happens and KSMQ leaves that building, because it's money from the state bond for a television facility in Austin, Minnesota, it has to stay that for the next 25 years. And sure, we have a great building in downtown Austin, a nice facility, but where are we gonna find another television studio or television company to move in and take it? Now, I'm not saying that you're not gonna last that long. Obviously, you have a great track record, but now that you would be in your own building and have to support yourselves, I guess I would like to see some concrete evidence that you're prepared to do that. Um, especially since you say you're fully funded by the government and now that model is going to change over the years. Uh, where are your funds going to come from? What happens if your $3 million capital campaign falls short? You're obviously going to have to adjust your budget there. I just feel that your budget should have been adjusted to account for the purchase of the, the acquisition of the land and not rely on the city of Austin to do that for you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, may I well, respond or what do you, you want me to say? I would say to Jeff is <clears throat> the foundation, two point million from the foundation, they do want the city to right. be involved. I mean they're not I understand raise, there's that. a good chance they wouldn't give that two and a half million if the city said we're not being you know and, and I guess one other thing I wanna uh, mention is that this was forwarded on a four to three vote. Uh, I being one of the nay votes in that vote. The other two nay votes are no longer members of this council. So that's why I say I wish that council would have been able to continue and complete the action on this and not put it, put the onus on a new council. Well, I think I'll let Craig speak to that. I know we tried to finish up the business we could with the old council. Right, and I think it was our goal and intent. Um, we had some uh, negotiation with KSMQ in regards to um, repayment if uh, KSMQ would um, leave the facility we negotiated uh, uh, 186,000 that would be re rebated to the city if for some reason they didn't fulfill the um, term of occupying the facility so that slowed us down a little bit we had intended to bring it forward before the end of the year um, and that and that's why that I guess in short didn't happen um, we still would have a grant agreement that will come forward with the state as well as a lease agreement with KSMQ uh, for the long-term lease, which would be a triple net lease, and all maintenance and those um, provisions would be the responsibility of KSMQ. Um, so I'd add those couple items. And we, we pay for that service. Uh, we, we pay for, it's not free where we are presently, we pay for all of our services, garbage, gas, rent, all that stuff, but sorry to... Yeah, and I don't think that if, if if there was any way that this was held up, I I didn't know about it, and I don't think it would be. Plus, it was four to three. I mean, we have, we would have every expectation it still would have passed. I mean, probably we don't know what the vote is going to be now, but we knew what the vote was going to be then. So, uh, I mean, I don't think it was put back for any reason. Anybody else? I'd I'd like to comment, um, Mr. Mayor. Uh, when when I look at the the grand scheme of Austin and I uh, visualize KSMQ down. Uh, anchoring our downtown area. Uh, it's a win-win for Austin in that for uh, a $450,000 investment, we get a $6 million building. And also we get renovation of a, of a site that is in dire need of renovation on a highly traversed area, Oakland Avenue there and, and really Main Street. So uh, 
to have a gem, uh, which KSMQ, anybody would, would love to have a public television station in their, in their area. There are very few and far between. It's an asset much like Hormel Institute or the Hormel Foundation or Dendermate, as it was mentioned. Austin has, has some gems that we need to support. KSMQ is, is right there at the forefront. Again, they, the exposure that this will give them, the, the, the uh, site modifications and improvement that are made on that Plunkett site right now, again, for $450,000 investment from the city, takes money to make money. 475. Up to 475,000, yeah. I think we got, I think the city's got a decent uh, purchase agreement uh, for a pretty good value uh, for a site like that from what the tax assessed value is to what we're purchasing it for. I think it's a, it's a, it's a bargain. So I'd like to, uh, to see this go through. I've already mentally moved them in, you know, to operate out of a, a old construction uh, site, the old uh, carpentry program at KSMQ for as long as they have. And I've seen the growth that, that Eric Olson has brought to this entity, KSMQ, and uh, the sky's the limit. I, I do visualize and I do imagine that there will be some different improvements to what goes on downtown Austin once KSMQ is on that site. Were there any other sites considered? It's my understanding that there's a site within a couple blocks of there that probably could have been purchased and dealt with for considerably less money. Was that ever considered? And it's actually the city's. I mean, I'll answer. There were there were I'm other sites really that we we initially looked at. I, I we had a list. Was, a there were other list. sites that we, you know, and how it got whittled down. I think it was through negotiation, and obviously it was it was your preference for this site. We did. And engineering uh, right. standards, being able to reach where we needed to reach uh, from our signal, uh, we had good uh, support and help from HRA with use of Twin Tower, which is right there, should we need it. That was a big one. Maybe and also, I just think the visibility to the, like I called it, the gateway to downtown, that's what I, I see that as being able to help. And, and long term, I mean, Tom, you gave us that, the sheets on budgetary and taxes and stuff, and I came in and I talked to Mr. Danker, and I said, well, what does this mean? You know, we're 220 something out of 230 as far as value per capita of the city, which means we don't have a lot of to the buildings and house we have an older housing structure we need to build more capital in the city we need to have our infrastructure in our city itself increase in value and and that's why we get the lga because we don't have the tax base and i don't know what this, this is isn't going to increase, increase our tax base, base yeah, though. Though. we're taking money tax. we're taking a building off the tax rolls and putting a public building it's not going to help but it's still going to increase the value of, of, of the city itself and it's it's not a large, but you know, a little bit. It's something you can't ignore for sure. All right, anybody else? I have a couple of questions. Um, I want to uh, second Mr. King's remarks. I think this is a project that um, we need to invest in, and um, nothing's guaranteed. We don't have any crystal balls, but um, I feel as though uh, KSMQ is a, a community partner that's proven their reliability um, a, as much as any other community partner um, that we could name in the city. So uh, at some point, I think you have to take a leap of faith and, and trust um, the, that the good people uh, minding the store are going to continue to be good people minding the store. Uh, I have two questions, one for Mr. Olson, one for Mr. <laughs> Clark. Um, Mr. Olson. I uh, happen to have a little bit of background in television broadcasting, and I anticipate a question from the general public, which is, are we going to end up with a huge, ugly satellite dish, tower, something in downtown Austin that's terrible? Right. Thank you, Councillor Helly. Uh, no, we, there are three big dishes behind our building now, which two of them will have to go. We don't use them for anything anymore. The third one will be smaller. And then as far as broadcast, that's done underground. Uh, and we believe through uh, Twin Towers and underground, we will be able to hit our line of sight target in Grand Meadow. No tower downtown, plus we could, I mean, it's against uh, zoning and so on. So no towers or dishes on this? Big pardon? No we will have a small dish, dish we small will. dish in the interim. Technology is changing within PBS too, and it's going to an all online uploading system. Mm -hmm. uh, funding is being appropriated at the federal level for that right now. So we're going to have a dish that won't be a broadcast tower. You know, that, okay. the one at Riverland is 200 feet 
and we won't need one at downtown, no. Okay. So, so my question for Mr. Clark was, um, and we've spoken about this, but could you share with the rest of the council um, what's being done to reach out to the small businesses that are located in the Plunkett building now? Yeah, um, we've had uh, DCA and um, SBA, Mark Thine, uh, reach out to the tenants there and try to find uh, some place that they might be able to relocate to. Um, they also provide uh, business planning and try to help coordinate with them um, in the transition for them as best we can. The um, purchase agreement, um, as far as the tenants are concerned, is the responsibility of the landlord um, that we'd get the building without with termination of those leases. But yes, we do want to help and um, hopefully have them land in a suitable location uh, so they can continue their business. How many businesses are there, Craig? Uh, including Mr. Plunkett's two others. Two others, okay. May I just make, make a quick comment in that? When our board came through with this idea of uh, looking at a new building, our board members are from Rochester, Owatonna, Mason City, um, and I engaged and was asked to meetings in Rochester with groups of people there about what KSMQ like to be in Rochester. And it was just, as they came in, I did them, and I afforded Austin the same opportunity, and uh, the foundation came forward, and that was the end of that discussion. So I'm just saying there's interest in public television and in a, and in a locally based broadcaster that uh, broadcasts local content and PBS programming. and. Uh, and it is a value. It's, the license is very valuable. So I'm thrilled that there's interest in Austin. And you're right. None of this would be happening <clears throat> without the foundation stepping up. I do have another question for Mr. Olson. Do you anticipate hiring any additional personnel with right. this move? I do. We've already posted uh, for one digital content manager uh, in hopes that the new building, I mean, it will be designed to be more of a multimedia portal. Uh, that's one person. Uh, as sales and revenues grow, even small will have to increase our staff there and programming. Um, the television landscape, the for-profit television landscape has changed in recent years here as you're aware. And so there may be opportunities for others who are still in Austin to look at other broadcast opportunities uh, for other programming to meet the needs of the residents. So absolutely. I guess a, another point that you brought up was with the tenants of the building, I guess I asked that question at prior meetings and was told that it would be addressed by the current owner of the property and it doesn't appear that that has happened as one of the, one of the tenants has reached out uh, and is very upset about this and, and found out it, about it through word of mouth, uh, not from her landlord. And uh, I just anticipate we might have some issues there which we're not planning on so I guess that's something else to consider I guess uh, again I want to reiterate I'm, I'm not against this project I think it's a great project obviously KSMQ you've been around for a long time you'll be around for a long time you feel this is what you need I just question the use of almost a half a million dollars of city funds to get this project done given our recent tax levy where we added a half a million dollars to help fund our current staff and to keep them uh, compensated at a just amount and the feedback that we got the negative feedback that we got from the community on doing that I just can't imagine that they're gonna run welcome us with open arms to investing that much money again in this project like I say I think it's a good project I just don't feel that the city should be participating at the level that it is thank you anybody else yeah, I think the only thing I would add is that at the end of the day, we have to invest tax dollars strategically. And I think the feedback that I've gotten as I've gone out and talked in, with people in the community is that if they can see the long-term vision for where those dollars are going, they're much more supportive. And as I think about the opportunity to put kind of an anchor on one side of downtown, and we think about where are we going to spend our dollars, downtown is clearly an area that strategically we've identified as an area that we want to be able to revitalize. At the end of the day, you know, a $475,000 investment, I think including the capital campaign, we're less than 6% of the total cost of it. 
So it feels like we get a pretty good ROI. And so from a pure business standpoint, I think over the long term that this is probably an investment worth making because it ties into a strategic objective of revitalizing our downtown and being able to help. So I'm very supportive of it. Anybody else? Okay. Um, I guess we need a motion. Where are we? We 10A is a motion just authorizing 475,000 in city participation for the KSMQ project. Do we have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Tom? Motion by Council Member King, seconded by Council Member Helly in favor of authorizing 475 grand in participation. So an aye vote is in favor of such. Council Member Fisher? Aye. Baskin? Aye. Helly? Aye. Waller? Aye. King? Aye. Pashusta? Aye. Council Member Large Austin. Nay. Motion passes 6 1, Your Honor. Thank you. And 10B is a resolution approving a purchase agreement with First Heartland Security and Casualty Insurance Company. We have a resolution. So I'll move the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Danker. Council Member Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. Poshusta. Aye. Councilmember Large Austin. Nay. Resolution passes 6 1, Your Honor. Thank you. And finally, 10 C is a resolution approving a preliminary project agreement with KSMQ Public Service Media Inc. Uh, do we have a resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Mr. Danker. Councilmember Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. Poshusta. Aye. Councilmember Large Austin. Nay. Resolution passes 6 1, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, and we will move on to 11. Thanks. You guys are, yeah, if you, if you wanna take off, that's all right. You can stick around if you really wanna watch the show, but- uh, Not much left. Not much <laughs> left, no. You guys are kind of the show tonight. Okay, so 11 is a motion appointing, uh, appointing Rain Sura as an honorary council member to April 2019. Let me tell you how this came about. I was walking over to the Welcome Center to talk to uh, Solomon. Solomon, and Solomon wasn't there, and Rain came up. Rain happens to live two houses away from me for four years. We hardly said a word, and I said, how'd you like to be the council, the ma the council member? And he said, no. And so I kept, looking. <laughs> I kept looking, and about two weeks later, he called up and said he'd like to do it. So it'll be very interesting. He's a younger guy, uh, but I, you know, he's, It'll be interesting having him here, and I told him he'd enjoy it. So I call him George an antique. George is an antique. <laughs> Sorry, George. You're an antique compared to Rain, but I'm an antique compared to you, so you shouldn't feel bad. Um, <laughs> so with that, we have a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Number twelve is the final is a resolution receiving a revised feasibility report and calling for a public hearing on February 19, 2019 for street improvements on 6th Street Northeast, 30th Avenue to 36th Avenue Northeast. Stephen. Uh, over the last couple of weeks since you recently approved the initial feasibility reports, um, we've determined that a uh, slight modification needed to be made to this project on 6th Street Northeast. Uh, we've highlighted those modifications in the revised fe uh, feasibility report that you have. They're highlighted in red, and we would recommend approval. Council, any questions or comments? If not, we need a resolution. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Danker. Council Member Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Helly. Aye. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. Pashusta. Aye. Council Member Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 7 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Before we get to George's comments, I would like to tell the council if you have people that you <laughs> would be good in, in this position, have them come in and fill out an application. This time, we, I mean, we didn't have anybody. We kind of came up short and, and had to go looking for people. And this is too good of a, I mean, there's a lot of people that would like this. So get some applications in and we'll try and. Uh, <laughs> We'll try and get to right, it. Right, and no one, you don't have to come through a council person or the staff. You can just apply. The, you can just the, apply. All the information's online. Yep. Go to the city website. Yep. This is, you know, it, it's here to, to help improve the information flow to the other communities and to just open things up, Austin, and our government a little bit. And I think we've done that. George, what do you feel? What do you think? <coughs> You're on the agenda at this point. 
It's your final shot. <laughs> is this my final meeting now? It's your final meeting. Okay. We apologize for keeping you longer. Yeah. Than <laughs> I know, I know. Um, I just, I just want to say uh, it, this has been quite a, um, um, an experience and very humbling to say the least. Um, what I would like to say is um, I want to echo some of the comments that have been said about uh, the previous council members, those that left, and the new ones coming in. Um, I think as a member of this community and this city, um, I think one thing that is very reassuring every night when I'm here is to see the civility with which the council um, executes the business of the city. I think that's, that's very reassuring. It is important always to disagree, but so long as we maintain some level of civility, I think ultimately we will always arrive at the best alternative for the city of Austin. And that's what all of us task all you guys um, with, and I, and I have been encouraged by um, the level of civility and the way the cooperation that I see uh, the council members uh, sh uh, demonstrate uh, each time we are gathered here to discuss the business of the city. So that is very reassuring and I am I'm hopeful and I'm convinced that this is going to continue uh, further down. Um, what I, the other thing I want to add to that is um, I know I did recommend um, one individual um, and I think she's, uh, um, you know, I have had several conversations with her and I think she's uh, very much interested and looking forward to uh, possibly stepping up. Uh, this was my last ditch effort because I wanted to kind of um, exit, but I was told I have to find somebody, a replacement, before I can go. So, <laughs> so, I, so to speak, I did my effort, and I was uh, fortunate to run into somebody that's uh, keenly interested. So, um, uh, moving forward, I think I'll, like, I'll encourage the city and the council um, to continue this process because I think um, down the road, this is going to be an avenue through which you can recruit potential uh, city council members um, who are going to step up. Uh, is, is that, does that mean my time is up here? No, your time's oh. not up. Okay. So who are going to uh, step up and uh, continue the work uh, to represent uh, some of the immigrant communities um, in the city of Austin? Uh, and I say that um, knowing very well that immigrant communities sometimes face different challenges. Um, challenges that uh, to some degree are only known to them and I think being part of the process is going to be critical in um, helping the city and the council at least address some of those blind spots in other words things that we may not be privy to uh, who are that are going to be brought to the forefront uh, to allow the city to put uh, into consideration as we move forward the last point I would like to make or maybe the second to last um, I would like to address uh, the incoming chief. I think I've seen you um, participate in some events at Riverland, um, which is, uh, again, very encouraging. I am very um, convinced that you indeed would uh, continue to serve this city uh, to the best of your ability. Um, I am always drawn to people um, that step up and are willing to offer themselves to service to everybody. Not everybody can do that. Sometimes, even when we uh, force ourselves to certain situations, if it is not a fit, uh, it can be readily recognized. And I think you have demonstrated that, that ability um, to continue to execute service to the community um, without fear of favor or what, what have you. And I think that um, you are indeed a great choice. Um, one thing I would um, ask of you is that moving forward, I think it's going to be very important and to redouble your effort to see how best you can actually reach out um, to the immigrant community particularly to get them involved um, in law enforcement because I think uh, from a strategic point of view it will also help you be able to penetrate some of these communities and better understand some of the problems that are uh, they are dealing with and be able to better address them. I, I think uh, policing is one that in my view your cooperation can take you a long way they need to see you as a partner and not as a foe. And so that would be an area that I would encourage you to look into and uh, um, forge as many relationships as you can uh, as you move forward. So the last point I want to make is going to be to my, my friend right here. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Hoverson is gone. Um, I want to say to the mayor and the city administrator and to the council and to you as well um, that I hope this group is going to 
maybe figure out a way um, to get your honorary council members more actively involved and engaged um, in some of the processes, the deliberations, and things like that. Uh, because I think sometimes uh, they may have great ideas, but not giving an opportunity, um, those may fall off, and we may not be able to maybe really better uh, incorporate some of those things or to their ideas uh, in our processes. So I hope there might be a possibility that this group with your leadership and your council uh, to be able to figure out uh, a way that, that that can be enhanced here. So on that note, it's been a privilege. I see friends and partners, and I'm looking forward to always running into you and uh, working with you in so many city events um, as I continue to live in Austin. I thank you all for the opportunity. And on that note, Mayo, thank you so much. Greg, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, guys. Okay, and you know you're the first honorary council member we've had. You're kind of like the Rosa Parks of honorary council members. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna <try laughs> and we're going to try and improve it as we go along. So right, right. You know, and I think you're giving us some good input now. We did take your candidate that you recommended, and I offered it to her, and I didn't hear from her for about four or five days. So then we moved on. Then I heard from her yesterday, and I said that we were going to get to her before the end of the year. So we're definitely she's on our list for sure. Um, the, the one thing I would say with respect to that candidate, though, she requests um, to be given, uh, in other words, she wants to forge more partnership in the community. She's heavily involved with the youth yep. um, activities in town, yep. and she wants to be, um, to f at least have some relationships where she's privy to events that are happening in the community where she can engage the young people um, to participate. Uh, and I did give her the assurance that I'm going to do the best I can um, to introduce her to people that uh, are, you know, are at the forefront of some of these events and hopefully be able to uh, engage her the best you can um, as, as we move on. So. And that's what, exactly what we're looking for. So we look forward to uh, her turn coming up. All right, Council, anything to, for George before we move on? Well, you know what, well, let's do it. You, you can do it in your, in your reports. We'll start with Paul. Nothing, Your Honor. Nothing. Laura? Um, Eric Olson mentioned uh, KSMQ is offering a free showing of the Mayo Clinic documentary uh, Sunday, January 27th at 2 p.m. at the Paramount. So you can come see um, the Mayo Clinic documentary that was recently um, released, uh, produced by Ken Burns. And that is free. And then um, I just feel like I have to channel the spirit of Janet Anderson and remind you that there's a Matchbox show coming up um, in February. February 15th, 16th, and 17th is the Snow White show. Okay. Jeff. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you to Mr. Bass for serving as our first honorary uh, council member and extending your term a month to help us get through to the next one. And that's all I have, Your Honor. Okay. Rebecca? Nothing. Steve? Well, yeah, we don't need anything from Steve. We'll go right on. <laughs> now, did you have anything, Steve? <laughs> Joyce? Um, no. Me and Steve go way back. <laughs> Greg? Uh, yes, we, uh, Mayor and Councilmember Prashusta plan to go to the Legislative Action Day for Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities and meet with Senator Sparks and Representative Poppy. Uh, Pashusta and yourself and okay. me. Uh, and then we also received just a little bit before a council meeting a call from Patrick Tannis. He's with Governor Wall's office in relation to our tur Turtle Creek 2 sewer extension issue. Um, so it's nice that the governor's office is coordinating with us on uh, that important issue as we look to extend sewer to that area that's uh, been holding on for quite some time now. So. We look forward to seeing some resolution, hopefully, in the legislative session on that. Otherwise, uh, Julie and Brian have a couple items, I think. Julie. Yes, in the continuation of the celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King, I just wanted to make sure people knew that on Monday, uh, February 4th, after the city council meeting at 6.30 at the library, we are going to be screening um, Alice's Ordinary People with the filmmaker Craig Dun um, Dudnick. And uh, it's about extraordinary people affecting extraordinary change for human rights. So that's at 6.30 on February 4th at the library. Mayor, council, uh, city administrator, uh, this is going to be my last council meeting. My last official day at work is February 1st. Uh, Your Honor, I would like to personally thank you again for appointing me back in 2010 and giving me the 
opportunity to be the next police chief. It's been a, a great honor for me to finish my 35 year career with the city of Austin. Uh, I cannot speak any higher of city staff, uh, my department staff. Uh, Austin has a terrific group of people or individuals that are very team oriented goal oriented work very well together, support one another. Uh, and I couldn't be more proud of the city of Austin and having an opportunity to, to work here for 35 years. Again, I would also like to congratulate my successor, uh, David McKeekin. Uh, obviously, I've been grooming him for years, but I don't think he needed a whole lot. Uh, David is a very bright, outstanding young man, and he will definitely lead our department into the future uh, obtaining and reaching new goals for the police department uh, again. Uh, Austin has been a terrific uh, city for me and my family. I've raised a wonderful family here in Austin. And again, I, I can't say enough about uh, working with city staff and my staff at the police department. And I just want to say thank you very much. And Brian, you've made us all proud of you and the police department. I want to thank you for the time you've been here. Uh, it was one of the most fulfilling things I've ever had to do, do with when you became chief and uh, uh, thank you. Thank you for what you've done for thank us. Thank you, Chief. Yeah. Thanks, Griggs. And with that, Greg, anything else? No. The only thing I have to say is we went up to the governor's inauguration. It was, a, it was fun. It was entertaining revealing we get to see the protesters up there which was <laughs> something. The it was fun uh, <laughs> the whole thing was fun and and i think we have a, a you know a decent we've known this governor as our as our congressman for 12 years always he's been great to work with he reaches out to us hopefully that'll continue and I, he's already done it just today i got a call from his office which Craig took care of so uh we're looking forward to the next two years i think we've have a great council, possibly the best council we've had, and uh, I think we're gonna have some. You fun said that this about year. the last. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that about the next one too. Babe. Maybe you never know. But no, really. I mean, we've had. I think somebody. You know, we've had issues over the years, and I think it's just lately, the last couple of councils that we haven't. And I, I, I don't foresee any issues with this council. I look forward to working with you for the next two years. So, with that. We will entertain a motion to adjourn till Monday, February 4th, 2019 at 5.30. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll take a five, ten minute break and meet across the hall in a small conference room for our semi-monthly work session. Yeah.